Thanks, everybody. This is Mike. <laughs> Mike, if you uh, if you need me, uh, I, I'm going to have to leave in just a little bit. But uh... yeah, no, that's fine. I, I appreciate you uh, getting this all set up. And, Certainly. Uh, we'll roll with it. It'll be what it is, right? That's <laughs> filmmaking, right? All right. Hi, everybody. Bye, everybody. 29 folks. This is awesome. All right. How are you guys adjusting to this life on Zoom? Yeah, so-so. Very odd, but uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll adapt. Yeah, well, I think, well, this might be the last semester we have to, uh, we have to endure this. Um, there's nothing like getting our hands on stuff, but I guess this semester we're gonna have to imagine that we are enjoying this more than we are. Uh, let me just hit these admits. I'm going to kind of go take a slow launch of this thing while I get the rest of these stragglers in here. Um, but uh, what I want to do is talk to you guys uh, just about the setup of the class, kind of what I did to structure it for online. And uh, we'll show you the syllabus, but I don't want to linger on it because it's just, it's just boilerplate. Um, and uh, you know, and then I'll uh, I'll let y'all go because, like I said, I don't want to hover on this for a long time. It's you know, it's the first day, and I don't know how many of you guys are going to stick around for the semester, or or uh, if you decide that this isn't for you um, and want to bow out. You know, so um, and we got time this semester. So what I did basically is I took my existing brick and mortar uh, cinematography one class. And uh, I just uh, pruned it quite a bit. And um, I wanted to get to the core concepts um, and then leave some of the uh, self-discovery up to you guys. Um, and uh, so we'll deal with the low-hanging fruit. You know, I still want to talk about f-stops and exposure and stuff, but um, we'll have hopefully some, you know, some nice conversations about this and not get too far into the weeds. Um, it was also kind of a challenge for me to think up some uh, assignments that I could give you folks, uh, given our limitations. But I think, you know, there's some stuff we can do. So I think, we'll, you know, we can make this a productive use of our time. And, um, and you know, we'll work through it. Um, I am, you know, available, obviously, through email. Um, use the LMS first, though. Contact me through web courses first, um, because that's kind of the kosher way to do it. And then my email is is you know is supposed to be secondary. Um, I had some fires to put out already this morning, so my my email got lit up a little bit in one of the other classes. So uh, that's the kind of thing. It's like if I start seeing a lot of stuff in my personal email. Um, that kind of triggers some other alarm bells in my head that might not ordinarily go off if I'm talking to somebody through web courses. So it's kind of like, you know, shouting 911 without actually shouting 911, right? Um, the, you know, the difference between where I receive those messages. So try to use web courses first, unless you're having trouble reaching me, or if time is, you know, a critical aspect of our communication and then go ahead and fire one off. I'm using my graduate email. That's why I have nights in my uh, in my um, address. Okay. So uh, I, I took some classes here at UCF uh, while I was waiting for my other school to uh, receive me in their creative writing program. So I have a nights.ucf.edu email. Uh, don't be alarmed. Um, it's just how it worked out. Um, I might get a different email later, um, but um, uh, I'm using the knights.ucf.edu uh, and it seems to be working fine. So um, that is my email. If any of you were wondering why I had a knights address, that's that's why uh, I was a graduate student here for uh, a little bit in, uh, what was it, 2018, I think. So, um, okay. So let's jump, I'm going to jump over here to... Yeah, let's go to my presentation. I put a little something together for today, just, uh, you know, to get you used to what you're going to see on a regular uh, uh, discussion. I'm going to center this so I got all my thumbnails to the left and the presentation to the right. Um, so 
what I'm going to do is record these Zoom sessions and I'm going to put them up on the LMS. And let me show you really quick where that is. I put uh, you know a lecture in each one of the module groups. So I have uh, you know the intro and part of uh, module one up already, and you can see where I have video lecture down here. So the idea is um, the way to calculate a participation grade is I'm going to have to um, uh, you know keep track of who comes to the Zoom session, and then I'm going to have to. Uh, have everybody else if you miss the live session which is you know it's fine just i'm going to create an assignment called video lecture and then all you got to do is go to it and you'll get a complete uh you know i completed this assignment button or something along those lines click it so that you know it it tallies you and then it, it'll just appear in web courses as you completed that assignment there's no um um there's no grade attached to it uh, until the end of the semester when we, you know, compare, you know, how many, you know, sessions you were able to look at either live or on the recording. And then that becomes, it's just like, did you come to class or not? Basically, hopefully that's how it's going to work out. So um, it's kind of in the experimental stages. I don't know uh, how your other teachers are doing it. Um, but this seemed to be something that I've already got somebody who is uh, in uh, Damascus and they're trapped by a, a travel ban for COVID-19. And so uh, he's going to take the first two weeks of the course uh, totally online. And, you know, uh, for people like that, I don't know if he can get Zoom in Syria. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, if he has access to that or not. Um, but, uh, you know, it's set up so that uh, if you have an instance like that, um, you know, you don't really miss anything. Now, next week, this class, for instance, will be affected by uh, Martin Luther King Day as far as uh, we won't have a scheduled Zoom session for Monday at three o'clock. Um, so I'll record that one and I'll just put it up on web courses. You can watch it anytime you want. and. Uh, it's, you know, the introductory session, so there's not a lot of substantive material there. There's some, uh, you know, some inspirational stuff. It's, it's uh, talking about uh, the topics we'll uh, cover in the semester and just getting you started thinking about cinematography uh, from sort of a creative um, visual point of view. Um, just offhand, how many folks... Um, are considering uh, cinematography as a career path. Do I have any cinematographers in here? Uh, I am. Great. So that's two so far. And I know I had another uh, young lady on email this morning that was indicating she was hoping for a career as well. So that's great. Um, let me get back to my... Uh, Whoops. Oh, no. How do I, uh, I want to see everything again. I guess I, oh, I guess I am. Okay. Um, okay. So anyway, that's where you'll be able to find the video lectures. Uh, it's an assignment. So it's a non-graded assignment. It's a complete incomplete. And it lets me know who's watching TV and who's kind of kiting on that responsibility. Um, you'll have a financial aid assignment. It's pretty simple. Um, I used to ask folks to write me a, a quick essay about, you know, stuff. And I thought, nah, let's not do that. So this time, I just want you to do a little quick uh, research. You can probably do this in about five minutes online if you're already hip to these kinds of things. But um, just uh, do a little quick research and... Uh, inquire about cinematographer Roger Deakins. I don't know if anyone here knows that name off the top of their head yet or not. Um, his most recent work was 1917, which she won the Academy Award for. Oops. Um, so do a little research on Roger and tell me how many times Roger's been nominated for Academy Award. Okay, that's your financial aid assignment. 
Okay. And I think, well, you might be amazed. Um, so don't forget to do that. It says in the academic calendar uh, that you have to have it done by the 15th, which is Friday. Uh, it seems like an awful quick turnaround on that uh, assignment, but um, at any rate, um, I have it up until Saturday at midnight. So uh, like I said, this should take you five minutes on your cell phone. Um, it's, you know, I mean, if you know the answer to it, that's great. If you don't know the answer to that, we'll cover it. Uh, it's really just for you to get your financial aid. That's all it is. So I don't want you to have to work too hard for that. You've already, you've already agreed to far too much interest by taking that on in the first place without me heaping on top of that responsibility. So um, when you, uh, well, let's go back to my presentation. So here we are. Oh, uh, a buddy of mine out in LA sent me uh, this, um, couple of weeks ago. Uh, so it's Tom Cruise shooting in, I think this was in Italy. Uh, they're doing a car chase uh, for the latest Mission Impossible uh, installment. And uh, I thought it would make a neat sort of uh, welcome back picture. Um, the show must go on, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, he's definitely, uh, I don't know how many of you caught that in the news, how he went a little ballistic on the set about folks not <laughs> wearing their masks. Um, you know, he's kind of right, but on the other hand, I think it was a little bit of, uh, you know, for show as well. But um, anyway, they are just about done with that, just about done wrapping that up. And um, I thought it was neat uh, just seeing all the cameras, all the you know, Alexa minis that got rigged all over this car. I think they had about uh, six or seven of them on this little guy. I don't know how many, I don't know how they crammed that many on this little, on this little car, but um some important dates for the semester. Um, I always post this, although you guys probably already know it. Um, classes begin today, if you weren't already aware of that. <laughs> and uh, just some quick due dates and some deadlines and stuff you need to be aware of. If you don't want to take the class, you got to let them know by Friday. Um, drop swap, I think you're, if you're here, you already know you want to be here or you already know you want to leave. Uh, withdrawal is March 26th. Uh, I guess you guys got a little burned with your uh, spring break this year. It's uh, going to happen uh, like two weeks before the end of the semester, which is kind of a drag, but um, we'll, we'll be up against that around uh, April 11th. I'm going to have a midterm for you, multiple choice, 30, 30 multiple choice questions, I think. It's because I've eliminated all the quizzes and uh, put in a couple of assignments instead. And um, you know, we'll have a midterm and then we'll have a final. The final will be, you know, uh, 60 questions, multiple choice. Um, easy stuff, won't take you very long. Um, I wanna mention this in case you guys aren't aware of it. Uh, if there's anybody who's not aware of the operational portal, um, it is uh, your resource. Um, and particularly, you know, usually it has a little bit more significance for this class than it will this semester. Um, but whenever you've got to check out gear, um, you can go to the operational portal. Can you guys see this okay, by the way? Yeah, okay. You can go to the operational portal and you can access uh, equipment inventory so you can know what they have on hand. Um, you can um, ask to uh, set up a, um, a date to come in and pull an equipment package uh, when you're ready to start shooting. It also has news about events in the department like um, every, I think once in the spring and once in the fall, they have like um, uh, program meetups uh, where everybody kind of gets together and uh, you guys get a chance. If you're new in the program, you get a chance to meet uh, some of the, uh, the older students, the seniors and stuff, and you get to meet uh, some of the master's uh, uh, students as well. A lot of times the seniors and the master's students are looking for uh, help on their uh, thesis projects or on their BFA projects. And so it's a good place to sort of wrangle a little uh, work experience by working on other folks' uh, uh, film assignments. Um, there's other stuff here. There's links to interesting industry uh, websites and so forth. There's uh, some how-tos, some training videos and stuff. It's a nice resource. Uh, it's a good thing to have. 
Um, I encourage you to check it out. It's not the kind of thing that you'll need all the time, but it's nice to know that it's there. Um, so I am going to let you guys sort of find out, you can check me out on your own. Um, I have, uh, <laughs> I've got a long time in the business, um, over 30 years at this point. Um, and uh, I started, uh, I started like you guys. Uh, in fact, I was probably younger than most of you. Um, I was uh, just turned 20 uh, when I got my, uh, my first job uh, as a camera assistant. Um, and I spent, you know, the rest of my adult life working my way through the camera department. Uh, I was in the grip department for a couple of years, transitioning from camera to lighting and uh, ended up as a uh, chief lighting technician. I'm a member of the IOTC Local 728 in Los Angeles. Um, and so I've lit, uh, my career focus has been lighting movies for television and for motion pictures. Okay, uh, and then the last um, five or six years, I guess, um, I started a production company in Los Angeles called Mind Made Media um, and I, uh, essentially what I did is created my own opportunity to be, to transition from gaffer to cinematographer. It's not an easy path. It's, it's a virtually indistinguishable career path. Um, if you're trying to transition from say one IOTC uh, discipline like uh, set lighting to camera because they're two different local designations with two different jurisdictions. Um, and it's not a cut and dry jump from one thing to the other. Um, so a lot of times you have to make your own opportunities. What a, a lot of times what folks will do is um, for instance, if they're members of set lighting in 728, they will start uh, taking jobs as cinematographers on, you know, small independent films or little 5D films or something around LA, uh, something non-union, something that doesn't violate any of their loyalty oaths or any of their uh, jurisdictional concerns. Um, and they'll go and do those, build a reel, start developing a, a little bit of a, an independent cinematographer resume and hope they can attract some attention. Uh, I took a different approach to that. I started a production company instead. <laughs> And I hired myself. <laughs> um, and that's how I started shooting. So I've shot a little bit of every category except the tent pole feature. I haven't had an opportunity to shoot a $200 million movie, but I've lit several of them. So uh, the experience that I'm drawing on is from my Hollywood life in the union and my independent filmmaking life as a part of Mind Made Media in LA, shooting for clients like. Uh, Microsoft, Saab, um, USA Network, Sony, a um, bunch of clients like that. So um, you can read about you know some of that stuff, or you can go to my IMDb here if you want to see what films I've worked on. Um, there's probably going to be a few in there that you've you've heard of before, like you know Pirates of the Caribbean or Any Given Sunday or um, I don't know uh, Angels and Demons. Um, check it out. Okay, so that's where my that's where where my experience, my knowledge, and my opinions are coming from. Okay, so um, well, there's no one way to do everything. You know, um, if you were to come to me and say, you know, what do you think the best way to light, um, you know, car interiors for running shots in downtown Orlando. I'm going to tell you how I would do it if I was on a movie. And then we can sort of think about that and we can back engineer it to, you know, what you can afford and what you're technically capable of. And uh, I can give you some really functional uh, advice. Okay. Um, I'm not book smart. Okay. It's all experience. Okay. Um, so you can take that to the bank. Um, and then hopefully my goal would be for you to develop your own sense of your own style and um, take a little bit away from these courses and develop your own sense of, you know, what your preferences are, what you like, what you don't like, what, what you think things should look like, um, and have some sense of that, but also have some functional knowledge 
um, that you can take with you out into the field and trade for a paycheck. That's the most important thing, folks, is getting paid, right? We got rent, we got cars, we got dinner out, we got some of us have families and, you know, expenses like that, a mortgage maybe. Uh, and, you know, the idea is if you got to get a job, you might as well get a job doing what you love, right? instead of doing something that you hate and waiting and hoping that you get an opportunity. So that's what I'm all about. I'm about giving you the skills that you need, knowledge that you're going to need to know. So if you say graduate and move to Atlanta, right? And you want to be a camera, you want to be a cinematographer uh, when you grow up, right? Uh, you know, you're not going to get hired as a cinematographer right out of school, but they'll hire you to load. They'll hire you to manage, uh, film mags or to uh, be a media manager on set to work slates uh, to carry equipment cases and to assist the first AC on whatever uh, needs to be done. You can certainly get that job. I got that job coming right out of the gate. So if I can do it, you guys can do it, right? But you can't get hired if you don't have some sense of what this thing is. So that's what I'm all about. I want to give you something you can use so that when you get out of here, here being UCF, uh, you know, you can get a job and make some money. Um, this is the outline. This is pretty inclusive, right? So I'm going to try to hit as many of these um, uh, topics as I can throughout the semester. If I get a sense of the pace and I feel like we need a little extra time on something, I might decide to spend more time on something and less time uh, on, on adding to the list of things we want to talk about and just concentrate on what uh, needs to sink in. But basically, I want to talk to you about what cinematography is from a uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, and the, the mindset that we're in when we're doing this thing, uh, who those types of people are. I want to show you a couple of contemporaries. And then I want to have you do a little research on your own and uh, discover uh, some folks that might stimulate your passion a little bit. Um, ladies uh, in the crowd, you may be uh, interested to know that there are very many, and the number is growing every day, uh, women cinematographers in the industry. So I want to uh, really make that point um, and, and, and emphasize it because I've, I've had, uh, let me adjust my screen here. I've had uh, folks where that was a genuine concern. And in order to, uh, you know, sort of, um, quell their fears about whether or not, you know, they stood a chance of getting a job in the industry. I say, hey, you know, I mean, I've got a couple of uh, good friends who are uh, female cinematographers, people that I really respect. Uh, and so this isn't, you know, a one way conversation. And, you know, a lot of times I say you guys, you know, but don't read into that. Okay. It's, you know, it's just look at me. I'm old, right? So I've got some programming that's probably going to be hard to, uh, uh, to, 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 you know, to rectify, but um, this talk is for everybody. Okay. So don't, uh, don't think in any way, even, you know, okay. There's a couple of you in the crowd right now. I can tell I'm going to take your screen picture right now. So I have my attendance. There's going to be a few of you in the crowd right now that are thinking, yeah, no, I don't want to do this. Right. Never say never because by the end of the semester, you may you may decide that this, you know, this is a good path for you to pursue because it's going to get you to whatever your goals are uh, moving forward, especially after you graduate. Um, I, I, I always had a sense in my heart, I think, that um, that I wanted to be a cinematographer. And so I started off in the camera department because I thought, well, that's what you do, right? You you know, the cinematographer is the head of the camera department. So you join the camera department and you spend a few years uh, at the bottom rung and you work your way up and then you're a cinematographer. Well, maybe, but not really. Um, and so I discovered that uh, even though I had a great deal of photographic experience, for instance, um, I didn't know anything about motion picture lighting. So I left the camera department and I worked my way into the set lighting department. And that's where you know, the grip grip folks are really interesting and I really enjoyed being a grip when I was a grip and I really value their service on the set now, but I really wanted to learn the nuts and bolts of lighting. So I got into the set lighting department as, as soon as I possibly could. Uh, and I worked my way towards uh, cinematographer from there. 
so your career is going to take maybe some pretty weird twists and turns uh, before you get 10 or 15 years under your belt and you decide that you're happy with what you're doing for a living. Um, so don't discount the possibility that what your goals are now might not be where you end up in the industry, say, 10 years from now. OK, and just sort of let that marinate and don't worry about it. Don't think, you know, don't give it too much of your attention. Um, but I want to show you some contemporaries, talk to you about uh, some of my favorites. So uh, I want to show you some work by Roger Deakins, uh, Emmanuel Lebesky, uh, Christopher Doyle uh, and Seamus McGarvey. Um, and then I'm going to have you guys do a little um, written assignment where you can research uh, uh, some cinematographers from the ASC, the active membership list from the ASC, the American Society of Cinematographers. And you can look up a couple of names and see if you find anybody in there whose work is got you fired up. Or maybe you already know who shot your favorite film by this time, and you can do research on that individual. Um, you know, I had, uh, I've had, you know, folks, you know, young women looking for female cinematographers, women of color looking for cinematographers, uh, women of color. Uh, there's all flavors out there and uh, there's some really good folks out there doing some really great work. Um, I want to talk to you about the camera department and the different positions in the camera department. And I'll go over them station by station. Um, talk to you about what those jobs are, what those, who those people are and what their responsibilities are focused on. Um, and then we'll move into um, a discussion that I think is valuable. And, you know, I, I think that students come away with a good sense of what they're dealing with by having a discussion on media. And I'll talk a little bit about storage. I used to, this used to be a really big conversation. Uh, I've paired it way back. I just want to talk to you about um, the most common uh, recording media that's out there. We're going to talk about how do I know how much video is going to go on my SD card? How do I know that? Okay, and I'll, I'm going to show you how to figure that out. Um, and just talk to you about the different types of media, what to avoid, what the best pieces of uh, kit are going to be. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about um, the sensors in our cameras. Um, I've eliminated the discussion on um, legacy film cameras because uh, by the time you guys get out of college, by the time you graduate, by the time you start working on a regular basis out in the field, uh, you're probably not going to encounter film cameras. Um, they're probably going to be, for the most part, extinct by then uh, or only existing on the fringes of the industry, which um, you, know, you might find in New York and LA, but probably won't encounter in Atlanta. Um, so I've eliminated that from our semester discussions, and we'll just talk about um, the CMOS sensors in our cameras and what they're doing um, a little bit, you know, and we'll talk about aspect ratio. Uh, I'll talk to you about some different types of cameras. Uh, I'll show you some studio models to see, uh, to show you what you will encounter uh, when you get out into the field. I'll talk to you a little bit about the stuff that we've got here at UCF. I think we got a decent assortment of cameras for you folks to use in the program moving forward. Um, I've consulted with UCF. Uh, I've been doing it since 2015, really, um, and helped them sort of make decisions and make choices about what to have, and and you know how much inventory uh, that they can uh, afford uh, to give you guys uh, the best possible platforms to work with. Uh, on your on your projects and stuff. So I'll talk to you a little bit about what what kind of gear we have here at school, so that you know by the time cinematography two comes around, maybe or your BFA um, uh, uh, capstone projects uh, uh, come along, um, you'll be you know familiar with what this stuff is, and you can make the best use of it. I'll talk to you a little bit about lenses. And we'll have a conversation about lenses that will give you some sense of what the creative options and controls are using your lenses and also with creative filters. That's going to get us up to the midterm. So that's like eight weeks worth of content. Um, on the back side, um, we got about six primary topics to think about. Um, we've also got spring break to negotiate in the schedule as well. Um, so this is kind of 
maybe front loaded a little bit in the semester in that we've got eight weeks before uh, the midterm and then only about um, only about six on the backside. Uh, two of those are review for the final and then the final itself. So really there's about four weeks of content to focus on on the backside, but um, uh, it'll be good. I think it'll be fine. And I hope that you guys enjoy the course. I'm gonna use uh, a number of videos from this YouTube client right here called Cook Optics TV. Um, Cook Optics is a lens uh, manufacturer. They used to be called Taylor and Hobson at the turn of the last century. Okay, they're from England. Um, and so they've been making lenses uh, for well over a hundred years. Um, their uh, cinema primes and their cinema zooms are considered uh, among the very best in the world, if not in some people's opinion, the very best in the world. Um, and recently within the last uh, three or four years, they started this YouTube channel and they have some really great conversations um, on all kinds of different topics that are concerned with cinematography, cinematography theories. Um, there are interviews, lots of interviews with industry professionals talking to you about the movies that they just got done working on. Um, you know, so there's there's a number of really great videos on their website. I, I've chosen a select few of them to show you guys in class and then hopefully uh, something like Cook Optics TV will become part of your knowledge repertoire uh, moving forward. Um, it's a good resource and I think that, um, I think, I hope that you'll enjoy the videos. Um, uh, I know a number of these individuals, so I, I, I I'm thoroughly convinced and, and have vetted this uh, website for you in terms of, you know, the the efficacy and the um, uh, accuracy of the information. It's top notch, right? There's nothing better than hearing from the horse's mouth what this thing's all about. Um, now, we I've chosen a new textbook, okay? Um, don't be alarmed. Uh, you can rent it off of Amazon. I <laughs> I got hired about a week ago, okay? So there was no way for anyone to alert the bookstore uh, in time for them to have inventory on this particular text. Um, and I, you know, I didn't make this decision lightly. I don't know how much of the old text they have in inventory at the bookstore. Um, but the text that I want to work from now is much, much better. It's better organized. Uh, the information that I really want to communicate to you is in this book and it's, it's highlighted properly. It's succinct. Um, there's no ambiguity and it doesn't get too far into the deep grass on theory and stuff, you know, esoteric conversations. And it talks to you just plainly about uh, what, this is um, on the basic fundamental level. Um, and it's got a number of topics in there. I'm not going to cover the whole book. It's a it's a big text. It's a nice one. Um, I've got a copy of it over here somewhere. It's uh, it's this one here. It's uh, Introduction to Cinematography uh, by Tanya Hozier. And you can see it's a, you know, it's a pretty substantial book, but you can rent it off of Amazon for 13 bucks. Um, and I would keep an eye peeled because a lot of times they'll have used copies that you can get for sale on Amazon and you can save a ton of money doing that. Um, now I tried, uh, this is the old textbook, by the way, Cinematography by Blaine Brown. Uh, it's not a bad book, okay, but it's not for a beginner, okay. There's a lot of conversation in here that relies on, you know, prior knowledge, um, that I, I, you know, I don't want to take for granted that any of you have at this point. So uh, Tanya's book is better, 13 bucks to rent it. And to make up for the inconvenience, I'm giving you all these other books, okay? And so I've created a textbook library uh, on the LMS, on web courses, uh, where you can uh, check out with the exception of intro, because I <coughs> I have that as a, um, it's a, it's not a Kindle document, it's, um, and it's not an EPUB document. In other words, I can't download it and I can't, I can't get it out of my laptop to give it to you, okay? 
but all these other books are PDFs that you can open up, download, look at, and use for reference out of web courses, okay? The old brown book, the one that I used to use, cinematography, you can see is included in that list, okay? If you took intro to production um, with uh, Nick Twardis or uh, Lisa Richardson, uh, you might have this one already, Filmmaking in Action. I'm giving it to you anyway, it's nice to have. Uh, I've got the Steve Katz book on cinematic motion. My friend Mike Uva uh, wrote the Grip Book series, and so we've got the Grip Book here for you. Um, and then there's a couple of other things that I thought the Camera Assistance Manual by Dave Elkins uh, is a real handy volume for you to have. And I'll, I will occasionally give you something to read out of one of these texts as an assignment. And so you have them. You don't have to go buy them, nothing. They're already in. In fact, I'll show you in web courses if I go to modules. Uh, in the getting started section, you see supplemental textbook and PDF resources. If you open that up, there's your uh, volumes right there. Uh, and I may add to that uh, throughout the course of the semester, I might throw a couple more books in there for you. Um, like uh, introduction to um, production is the text that I use when I'm teaching intro uh, face to face, which is not this semester, um, because it has lots of um, uh, production documents in there like camera reports and call sheets and you know breakdown sheets and schedule sheets and stuff and uh, I'll you know I'll, I'll put that up here for you um, I gave you an ASC manual the seventh edition which is the black edition from I think it's not it's either 1980 or 1985 I forget now uh, what year it was um, but uh, it was what we considered the best ASC manual at the time before the age of digital came out. So uh, I've given you this one only because I don't own the blue one, which includes uh, um, digital information. But the digital changes so much that I thought, you know, before you go out and spend, I think the new one is like a hundred and something dollar, hundred twenty five dollars, right? Uh, before you go out and spend one hundred twenty five dollars on an ASC manual, that will probably you know, anything that is important about the blue version might be out of date in a year or so because the manufacturers are coming out with so many new pieces of equipment so often. But this book right here has all the knowledge that you would have needed to know if you were on, let's say something from that era, let's say um, Jurassic Park, the first one, okay? If you're a camera assistant on that movie where, uh, where we were still shooting film, this would have been the ASC manual you would have been carrying in your back pocket. Okay, so I've given you the black the black book. Okay, that's the one to have pre digital era, mind you. Uh, and I still use it um, occasionally. But some of the stuff that I used to rely on mostly out of this uh, volume, I can now do with my cell phone. So I don't pull the uh, black book out as often as I used to. But it's still, it's nice to have, and you guys have a, a PDF version of it now. Uh, so you can have it in your favorite electronic device and access it as well. Um, back to my presentation. So I've given you these textbooks. Uh, like I said, I might access an article or a chapter in one of these other ones outside of Tanya's book uh, for a reading assignment. That's why I've given you everything I could possibly give you. I looked and looked and looked and looked for a PDF version of Intro to Cinematography, could not find it to save my life. So the best I could do come up with was the $13 rental. It's not too bad, you know? And then if you run across a copy, it's worth having, okay? I don't know if they talk to you about this in your intro classes. Uh, I do for a little bit. Um, and that is if you were to go out and buy all these books. So there's like maybe I don't know, $150 in value right here if you were to go out and buy all these volumes together, uh, maybe $200, right? If you were to do that, you know, you could write all that off of your off of your income taxes, okay? It's what we call a professional library, okay? So if you get a chance to buy the book, you can afford it. Um, you don't uh, you don't mind having the the hardcover volume around. Uh, it's, it's not a bad thing, and you can also deduct it from your taxes, which is a bonus. Okay, so let me jump over now full-time to the LMS, because the rest of it is all here. Um, so 
look for the ingenue zoom okay this image is looking down the barrel of an ingenue zoom um, that's kind of the id photo for the course <coughs> i'm teaching two sections of cinematography this semester section one which meets mondays at three and section three which meets uh, tuesdays at six um so there's a, a couple of groups of you uh, groups of you out there you guys are all or should all uh, be section one at this point and i put these little buttons down here it's probably the same stuff you've seen in other classes quick navigation i put the announcements first because you're going to want to check these on a regular basis see i've already sent you guys three messages uh already uh this weekend okay uh one was about the zoom meeting which you clearly all got uh just a basic greeting and then there was uh another uh question that somebody brought up about zoom meetings and attendance grades and and so forth and so i responded to her this morning uh, but i also might put quick announcements up there if something about the class changes uh after today like a new assignment or something uh you know something might get eliminated or a module might get added whatever it is okay i'll always shoot out an announcement to everybody so you should check the announcements page uh you know at least once a week if not if not two or three times um so that's there for you um what else so the getting started stuff that's where you can quickly access uh, oh that's me and here's my bio if you want to look me up um you can get that information uh what else so the syllabus is here um like i said it's you know it's real boilerplate in fact let me get to the uh, modules here tech support you guys know about and then this is just telling you how to get to zoom which you already clearly know how to do um where was i okay so the modules so uh the syllabus is really pretty boilerplate i've put it up here and uh you can access it and you can read it on your own it, it's you know saying pretty much the same stuff you've heard probably over and over again uh since you've been going to ucf uh there's not much different information in here there's a few things about like um you guys have a materials fee there's some q a about that in here um it's talking about you know COVID 19 protocols which we don't have to worry about because we're all online. Um, it reiterates uh, the part about your textbook is your the link direct link to the Amazon ad that I found uh, that deal that 1372 rental deal is going to expire, I think on February 1st or 2nd. Okay, so you don't want to wait around to do that you want to get that taken care of right away. Uh, so you don't lose the deal after that the price goes up and I don't know what it goes up to so uh, I you know I suspect it would be at least a few you know a few dollars more um, <laughs> grades you guys know all that the grades break down and um, mum, mum, mum. stuff about my office which I don't think I'm going to have a brick and mortar office uh, this semester um just because if i'm working from home already i've got an office in my home already so i don't need another one at ucf um so i probably won't have a campus office this semester um but like i said you can reach out to me here's my night's email you can also reach out to me in the lms if you go to um well no let's not do that if you go to uh people all right, I'll be in the list of people as teacher somewhere probably down the bottom because I'm W. There I am, way down at the bottom. Just you know, access my email that way. Send me a message or whatever. Okay, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I think I was pretty good today. I was getting back to folks uh, pretty quick today. I like to get stuff off my plate. You know, uh, oh, I lost my camera. You guys, can you at least hear me? See if I can go to the FaceTime camera. There we go. You guys hear me okay? Okay. <clears throat> um, I like to get stuff off my plate really quick. Okay. I don't like to have things to do lingering on a list that I have to worry about. Right. So um, if you call me or if you send me an email, rather, uh, I'll try to get to you as quickly as I can to get you sorted out and get you back on the job. Right. Um, 
where else do I want to go from here? So I talked about announcements, Zoom. Um, you're probably not going to see any of your assignments yet because I haven't uh, I haven't opened up the course. There's the lectures. There's you have a shooting assignment um, about uh, three weeks from now. Uh, you have a written assignment coming up. Um, you'll have a I've got a little kind of a widget assignment that we'll do after we talk about the uh, recording media section. Um, and there's an extra credit assignment. I don't normally give extra credit, um, but I had enough inquiries about it um, in the spring, in the, uh, what was it, the fall, of, no, the spring of last year, um, that I thought, well, maybe I'll include something in there uh, for you guys to do. I haven't sorted out what that assignment will be yet, but that's like week seven, so I got a little time to swat that idea around. Um, Discussions. You're going to have a couple of discussion posts uh, as assignments this semester. Um, I'm going to ask you after we go over cameras and stuff, what camera you think you might want to choose relative to what you're going to be doing professionally when you get out of here. Like if you want to shoot documentaries, okay, we're probably going to discuss a gear platform that's going to be really, that's going to make a lot of sense to you. Um, and if that's the case, um, you can tell me about it in this discussion post. Uh, you'll have the spotlight, which is a written assignment. I've got it as a discussion. I'm going to have to redesign that as a written assignment. Uh, and then I've also put a general discussion board up for you folks. Uh, it's in the beginning here. Where did I stick it? Here it is. Okay. And this is for, you know, a sense of community, right? Especially being online now and we're not in class, right? So you don't see your friends uh, every Monday afternoon when you come to uh, Nicholson 148 because we're not there, right? Uh, but if you wanna stay in touch with people, if you wanna put ideas up here, um, talk about, you know, uh, whatever, uh, it's your forum, right? Uh, just keep it clean, keep it, uh, you know, keep it respectful. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll hop in from time to time, maybe not. It's really for you guys to just, you know, uh, in, in other classes that I've taught, uh, students use it for like, hey, did you see that, uh, the last Avengers movie, let's say, and they're talking about it, or, you know, I just caught this really great documentary on Netflix, you might want to check it out. It talked about something that we talked about in class and, you know, just, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. You know, what are you guys going to do for your next project, whatever. Uh, it's your forum, it's for you, and it's, like I said, it's to keep you all in contact with one another, okay, because it's really about our interpersonal relationships, and it's about uh, networking and keeping in touch, right, because the industry is very clandestine, okay, it exists in the landscape, and if you're not looking real hard, and if you don't know how to determine uh, the clues, you may not find it, you may uh, stumble around and never know that it's there right under your feet, okay, so networking and keeping in contact with folks is a good habit to start, you know, instilling in your in your mind now so that uh, when you get out into the world, uh, you know, you can find your people, you know, and hook up with them. Um, that's about it on the LMS, I guess. Um, oh, I have an outline for you, uh, which is a little bit more helpful, I think, than the syllabus. The syllabus is really what the school wants to send to Tallahassee to make sure that we're all conforming to the learning outcomes that have been sort of sorted out at the, uh, you know, at the nosebleed level of the administration. But down here in the ditch where we're digging, you guys just want to know what we're doing each week. And so, you know, here it is. Uh, you know, you can sort of figure it out from the modules page as well. But right here, this is the outline that I've built the course from. So if it's not in here, we're probably not going to cover it, okay? Um, so if you wanted to know what's next or what we're going to look at over the course of the semester, I would check out the outline. It's a little bit more uh, detailed and it'll give you a better idea uh, of what we're going to be doing, okay? And that's here uh, in the first section as well, okay? So when you go to modules, it's there along with the syllabus and that's really about it. So right now we're going to go as far as section 1.1 by, well, let's see, we'll get to 1.2 by, well, no, that's next week. I got you guys once a week. So that's it. 
we're doing hello my name is today and then next week we'll start getting into role models now you won't be here because it's mlk day but i'll put up a discussion it'll be framed just like this one just like today right okay there'll be a library card and then there'll be a little picture and then they'll be hey what's up and then there'll be well probably not this i say it once and then it's played out probably won't have this but you'll definitely have the outline uh, of the section that I'm covering, and then I'm gonna get right into the nitty gritty, okay? Little tip, if you look at my library card and you look down here in parentheses, that'll tell you how many slides are in that presentation. It'll give you a sense of how long the talk's gonna be. Now, I can talk, folks. I can talk all day about this stuff because I love it and it's all I've ever done. It's all I know, right? Um, but that gets boring after you know, two and a half hours. Even my best students are like, you need to wrap this up, bud, because we need to go get some coffee or lunch or whatever it is. And I don't want to do that to you guys this semester, especially online, because it's kind of hard to sit and look at a screen for three hours. I don't know, you know, and I'm not going to ask you to do it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try and keep these presentations to like an hour, right? And that's usually about 20 to 25 slides, right? So 15 slides is probably going to be about a 45 minute talk. And oh, look, we've really been talking. I started at five after for about 47 minutes. So it's a pretty good gauge, okay? I'll have one of these for you. I'll have it up by Monday afternoon of next week. You don't have to come to a Zoom or anything because it's MLK day, but I'll have the Zoom recording and then you go and check it out on web courses and just see what it is and then i'll give you some links to the videos and you can look at the videos full screen at your house via youtube links or i'll show uh snippets of them through my little window here uh and you know and share what i want to share with you about those things uh and then you know that'll be next week so uh, my other class my tuesday class they don't get the day off they have to listen to my zoom meeting so you guys dodged a bullet next week uh you can you can do the recorded session and you know do it at your leisure um but be aware that i'm going to ask you to read something for next week and it's the first chapter in the intro to cinematography learning through practice by tanya hosier okay and it's an easy read she uses a lot of pictures on there so it's not 17 pages of close reading right technical nitty-gritty details and a lot of dry stuff um, she uses a lot of contemporary references with nice photos and images from the movies and i think it's a nice book i think you guys will like it um, the first chapter is just getting your feet wet okay uh, so you got that to deal with and then you got your financial aid assignment remember i want to know how many academy award nominations Roger Deakins has had as of 2020, right? So that doesn't include what might happen in a month or two. Only what has transpired, okay? So up to 2020. And that's really it. And beyond that, you know, I'll see you, I guess, the week after next in person on Zoom. Now, the other neat thing about this Zoom contraption that we've got going on here is if you need uh, to have a Zoom conference with me about something, we can do that uh, just us, right? It doesn't have to be as the whole class. So uh, we can have meetups through Zoom. You can reach me through email. You can reach me through the LMS. Um, if you got questions or if stuff is giving you trouble or you just need to talk, you know, cinematography is driving you to drink, you know, whatever, uh, let's work it out and let's figure out what the fix is, okay? And let's find out where you belong, right? Because you might not belong in the camera department. The camera department and you might be oil and water, and that's okay, all right? Um, if that turns out to be the case, cinematography is still gonna help you if you understand what is happening and what's going on with cinematography. For instance, and I'll just tell you this really quick, if you wanna be a production designer, okay? you're going to have conversations with a guy like me about what color you want to paint the walls in the set you just built. 
Okay, because if you give me white, shiny, bright walls and an interior set on stage, I'm going to ask you to repaint the set, okay, to something that the cameras can deal with a little bit more without uh, problems with the exposure. And that's something you're going to learn about this semester. If you are going to be a script supervisor, okay, you need to, you will forge relationships with all the second ACs that you will ever work with on any feature film or television show uh, your entire career because the second AC and the script supervisor are coordinating what information gets written on that little slate that we do that with and all that information goes to the editor. So if you're an editor, cinematography is going to be something you're going to want to know about because you're going to want to understand why I shot a close up or a wide master and why I didn't get the mid shot or if I got two different versions of the mid shot, why did I do that? Because I wasn't sure how you were gonna cut this scene together and I'm shooting for the edit. You're gonna to wanna to understand a guy like me if you're cutting the movie, right? It's not just the director and the editor that are talking, it's also the cinematographer and the editor, okay? Because I'm trying to figure out, hey, you know, maybe a close up's gonna work better here. And if the director says, hey, you know, I, you know, I wanna get that line, what do you think? Well, I think it's right here. It's this kind of shot, right? And then we're going to work that out and we're going to give it to the editor. And then the editor has to deal with that content, whatever it is. Okay. The editor might also need to get in touch with me uh, to talk about pickup shots or something for a, uh, a hot edit that's happening while we're still shooting the movie, right? And they're assembling already in the midst of production and they want some inserts from a scene that we shot a week ago. And so they need information about what data cards that stuff was on, uh, what the exposures were for the special effects people, uh, information about lenses and, and camera information that the special effects folks are gonna need uh, to create wireframes and things. So if your destiny is not in the camera department, I think you'll still be able to get some value from this class, I hope so. Uh, you should be able to. Uh, even if you're going to get into something like hair and makeup, right, where you think I'm never going to touch a camera. Well, but your product is, in other words, if you're doing hair and makeup for a movie star, that movie star is going to be in front of my lens with my lighting shining all over it, him or her. Uh, and I might ask you for uh, a powder down. I might ask you for uh, a baby oiling. I might ask you for some extra eyeliner. I might ask you for uh, some hairspray, right? And uh, we'll have a conversation at one of the monitors and we'll talk about, you know, the shade of the lipstick or uh, can you, uh, I'm, I've got a really uh, hard highlight in here that I can't get rid of no matter how I move my key light around. Can you give me, can you give me a dust up, I'll call it, right? And they'll go in and they'll powder down the actor's forehead, right? And all of a sudden that highlight goes away, right? That's hair and makeup, right? And, and they might see it on the monitor before I'm ready to deal with it. So they might be over there sitting next to the director looking at the rehearsal on the monitor and understand that the actress has a big obnoxious highlight on her forehead that I'm not gonna be able to fix with my lighting. And as soon as the first AD says, last looks everybody before we get ready to roll, you're gonna hop out there in front of the camera. You're gonna know it's your time and opportunity to give that thing a dust up and you're gonna deal with it on your own because you're gonna understand just by watching the monitor what my troubles are and you're gonna hop in there and you're gonna be able to do your job more effectively. So even folks in what you would consider a non-related department, I think can benefit from a discussion about cinematography. So that's where my head's at. Um, and that's what I wanna try and impart to you, okay? Everything else about the web courses uh, site is self-explanatory. I'm not going to flog it anymore. Um, do you guys get these to-dos over here on the side like I do? Look over here for your upcoming assignments and stuff. Uh, pay attention to announcements. Uh, if you send me an email, look in the announcements or messages uh, for my responses. Um, and then, uh, you know, I wish you all the, you know, the best of luck with this and uh, I hope that you enjoy uh, the topics that I've selected for you. Um, does anybody have any questions for me before we adjourn? No? 
I did an amazing job of explaining this to everyone. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, what's this 11 over here? Chats. Oh, 11 conversations. Yes. Okay, good, good. Did anybody ask me a question in the, in the chat that I need to address at this point? He's got a great podcast on Spotify as well. Oh, yeah. Yes. Talking about Roger. Roger has uh, a pretty great uh, website, actually, um, which is very informative. And even the pros are watching his podcast. We all watch it because we all love Roger. He's amazing. Um, I've met him many times. He was the uh, cinematographer in residence at uh, UCLA. Uh, I think it was 06 and 07. Um, <clears throat> and I was at several of those meet and greets uh, and at the ASC clubhouse in uh, Hollywood. Uh, he is a very, uh, very um, nice man, uh, very well-spoken. Um, He's not brash. He's not uh, gregarious. He's not fully aware of the fact that he is one of the best and highly sought after cinematographers in Hollywood. He's very approachable um, and very willing to share his knowledge. And the proof is in his podcast. I mean, the, the uh, episodes are very informative. So he's one of the folks I want to introduce you to. Uh, other than that, uh, thank you for a good session. I appreciate everybody coming in attendance. And I don't know, I think this is going to work out okay. Like I took a picture of the screen with everybody's name on it. Uh, I think I admitted a few people after I took that photograph. So I'm thinking the smart thing to do might be for everybody to just go to the assignment and click the tab that you were there, right? So that I know that you were in attendance. Uh, but I have the initial list right here uh, that I'll work off of myself. Um, this is kind of a prototype situation right now. I don't know if this will be the workflow moving forward or not. Uh, I'm looking for the easiest way to do it. If anybody has a suggestion, I will, I will listen to that as well. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, if there's no new business, I move that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second on the motion to adjourn? Uh, there's a question in the chat. Uh, yes. Will we need to use equipment for any of the projects on uh, playing? How would that work? I have, well, we have some cameras that you guys can check out at uh, the equipment room, but nobody's really going to the campus right now. So the assignments that I've dreamed up for you, I think you could do them with your cell phone. Now, here's the thing about using your cell phone. It's not always the best photo capture device by virtue of inferior optics or a lens that's just obnoxiously wide that has no sort of presence. Um, so, you know, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take that tool and you're gonna have to either exploit its weaknesses. In other words, if it's got a really obnoxiously wide lens that's not real sharp to begin with, don't try to shoot a detailed setup with that because the equipment's gonna let you down, right? So pick your content wisely so that you don't exceed the capabilities of your phone. Some phones are really terrific. My phone is, I don't know, Apple I, uh, 8, I think, version 8. Uh, and it's pretty decent, right? And I can zoom in a little bit with it and it's very sharp. Uh, and it's a great low light capture device. So um, you can do a lot with it, but it's a little wide-ish, right? And just like uh, my, uh, what do you call this? My, um, my um, face cam, right? This is a horrible device, this face cam, right? Now, if I was shooting a movie and I needed a, a point of view shot of somebody talking on a face cam, then that might be, that's the perfect tool for the job, right? Because the lens is so distinctive in its, in its, um, uh, technical uh, inferiority, right? I was shooting you guys on a Panasonic GH5 that I'm running through a, a, a video capture card. So the other image of me had better perspective. It had a better, you know, overall, you know, uh, flatness about it. Um, and 
and I could control its perspective and the exposure around the room a lot better with, with the uh, with the cinema camera than I can with my laptop camera. But my battery died. So what do I do? Right? I go to the next best possible tool I can put my hands on. And then I need to know as a professional, I need to know how to change gears and make that piece of equipment work for me because that's all I got left. Right. And I, I can honestly say to you guys, in all of my years in the film industry, that tended to be exactly my job, no matter how much money we were throwing at a film, right? As a department head, whether I'm the head of the lighting department or head of the camera department or head of the grip department, right? It's really about solving problems on the set on a daily basis. You've got a plan. Everybody shows up, but something happens, something goes wrong, and you've got to deal with it, right? Um, and so when my battery died, I had to go to my laptop camera, which is a crappy lens that I would probably never, ever want to use for anything. But in the absence of my GH5 and the fact that I needed to finish my talk, this is the camera now. It's the best possible camera to use because it's the closest, most available tool. And that's a lot of times what it's all about, no, whether it's $200 million movie or a class project, right? It's what are you going to do now, right? When <laughs> I can tell you a story about Tears of the Sun. You guys know the movie Tears of the Sun? On set one day, two out of three generators powering the set, uh, one of them broke a belt and the other one threw a rod. And so the two generators out of three uh, failed in the middle of shooting. What do you do? Well, we make the best use of the remaining generator and treat it delicately for the rest of the day and finish our call sheet the best we can uh, so the teamsters, teamsters can stay up all night fixing the two generators that just blew up, okay? And that's filmmaking, right? Because anybody can do this with all the time in the world, all the money in the world and the best possible gear to play with, right? It's how you handle the situation when the chips are down and when something happens that throws a wrench in the whole thing. And then if you're good with your tools and your knowledge is good and sound and you got the experience, you can calmly address the problems, sort them out, mitigate the damage and finish the project at all costs, right? Because there's somebody sitting in a director's chair 20 feet behind the camera sweating the budget and worrying about whether or not this recent problem is going to throw them into a budgetary tailspin and they're going to have a problem at the bank when they go to create payroll or whatever it is right so fixing problems is really what we're doing in the film business uh, just with a lot of money and interesting actors all right that's all i've got for you guys um that's about as long as i want to go it's about an hour so thanks for coming um, if there's no more questions, I will see you next week via virtual and the week after that for another Zoom. All right. I am stopping my screen share, going back to my, yes, question? Okay. All right, folks, have a good afternoon. Thanks for coming, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye.